Throughout the competitive Super Smash Bros. scene, Yoshi has been a solid, all-around type character who has taken a spin on the already solidified archetype with a few new quirks. With the addition of his Egg Shield and Double Jump Super Armor, along with its massive height, Yoshi plays a little different to his fellow Smash 64 all-arounder in Mario. Through the series, Yoshi's placing depends on how well the game's engine promotes his aerial movement and how well it can gloss over his flaws such as his lack of range. Due to his uniqueness, he has a bunch of solidly dedicated mains who desire to prove his viability and excellence in all five games throughout the series. In this video, Yoshi's time throughout the Smash Bros. series will be looked at. Today, we will be analyzing Yoshi's moves, results, strengths, and weaknesses as we dive deep into Yoshi as a Smash Bros. fighter. Before we begin the video, I would like to ask everybody to subscribe to the channel if they've been enjoying the content. I have some big plans for the rest of the year and would love to have more people involved in these events, but that involves more community support. So I'm asking you to please subscribe and share this channel around to make these plans later in the year a huge success. Thank you. Yoshi's character is a play off of the all-around archetype, with a few quirks and mechanics to make him unique. Overall, Yoshi's playstyle involves getting in on the opponent and using his great airspeed and funky movement throughout the series to create long combos. Yoshi has some good out of shield options and an interesting double jump that allows him to get a little bit more out of a standard all-arounder playstyle than Mario, the other all-arounder discussed in this series so far, while still having special abilities of his own. He's able to use his quick moves and speed, along with his jump height, to follow the opponent to combo them effectively. As for his disadvantage, Yoshi has two mechanics that help him there. As mentioned, his shield and his jump. As for this shield, Yoshi will be placed inside of an egg, which is unable to be shield poked, so it is a lot better for him in shield pressure. Since with his good out of shield options throughout the series, he can pop out and attack without worrying about taking damage. The other benefit is super armor in this large double jump, which helps him recover back to the stage, as well as tank through attacks with his own quick aerials to start combos. Yoshi is one of those characters whose positives really align with his archetype and help him advance in that regard. While Yoshi is a great all-around character, this means that he is not a master of any single aspect in the game. The place where this can be seen the most is in his range. Since he uses his feet, head, and tail to attack, all of which are not lengthy, he lacks range, and this gives him trouble for getting in and playing neutral, despite his great airspeed. This means he gets heavily outspaced by sword characters, and even characters with just normally large hitboxes and moves. Other than his range, he does lack a true recovery due to his up B being his egg throw. This move does give him some height in certain games, but it's not enough to be a true recovery, and that means the only way that Yoshi can get back to the stage is with his double jump. This jump does go high, but is not nearly a good enough recovery, even with super armor and it causes him to get edgeguarded a lot, and quite easily. Despite being an all-around character in Smash 64, Yoshi has some of the strangest gameplay in the first Smash iteration. From a combination of his two special mechanics, his heavyweight, his great airspeed, and double jump cancelling, Yoshi players in Smash 64 use their character's weirdness to help them win sets. However, even though he is strange, the scene's opinion of him at the start of the game and the competitive life cycle was lackluster, as his disadvantage and neutral caused him to start off not so hot. In the first tier list made in March of 2008, Yoshi had been plagued by his lack of a true recovery, causing him to rank 8th in the middle tier under Jigglypuff and Mario. In a game where recoveries were not good in general, his lack of a rising up B just put him even farther down in this category, and essentially made it so that when he was thrown or hit off stage far enough, it was game over. In addition, his lack of range against other characters' crazy hitboxes such as Kirby and his up tilt made it difficult to approach. Over the next year, Yoshi players understood that if their disadvantage and neutral was not good, then they must make their advantage state so good in order to try and balance out this flaw. They did do this by optimizing his combo routes and really working on implementing double jump cancel combos and movement into their play, and caused him to begin his rise on the tier list 
where he then ranked 6th out of the 12 characters. This progress kept going in the years to come, and with some good placements from Yoshi players throughout the world, he ended up in 5th place in A tier, along with Fox and Captain Falcon, by using his 0 to death combos, helping him move himself up. As Yoshi got better in the meta, more and more players started to play him and get better results, cycling and causing him to move up more in the meta as well as more players playing him due to better results. The best Yoshi player and the third best player in the world as of the last ranking is the Japanese player Kuraba, who placed 7th at Super Smash Con 2016 and 2nd at Smash Con 2017. In addition, Wizrobe, the best Captain Falcon in Melee, also played Smash 64 and ranked 5th in the rankings while using Yoshi as well. Other than those two, a bunch of other Yoshi players did well, such as Tacos, Bono Bono, and Hio, to advance the Yoshi meta in this game. From Yoshi's first to second appearance in Smash Bros, he got a few new moves, while staying fairly similar overall. The first move change was to his back air, which changed from a double-footed kick backwards to a backwards triple tail swipe. This was great for Yoshi, as it gave him less of a killing option but more backwards facing combos since he could drag down the opponent and set up into an up tilt or turn around forward tilt for more combos. His other moveset change was in his up tilt, which changed from a headbutt above him to a snappy tail swipe. These two moves also helped out Yoshi as his long tail, as opposed to his short feet or head, gave him a lot more range, one of Yoshi's continuous problems. As for general changes that all characters got, Yoshi found the addition of a side B into his moveset. This was not very useful, as it was his egg roll move, which put Yoshi into his egg, and as the move suggests, had him roll around in it, but it was too slow to be of any use. He also got the addition of an up and down throw, which further helped him with his combos. As for the global changes, the addition of directional air dodging, and therefore wave dashing, helped Yoshi out tremendously. This was because with his crazy long and high double jump, and continued super armor from the last game, he could perform some of the craziest movements in all of the series, which not only looks sick, but were also super helpful to his gameplay. As a character who loves the air in Melee, the shortening of landing lag and true implementation of L canceling into the game and the competitive scene helped this character out tremendously in comparison to others, since most of all of his game relied on aerials, aerial combos, or aerial movement. Two other specific issues for Yoshi in the transition were his recovery and killing power. Since he had the unique mechanic of his huge double jump, the devs thought that he did not need his up B, his egg toss, to help him out with his recovery, and so his heightening gaining potential was removed, causing Yoshi to have a subpar recovery. As for his killing power, the devs reduced that as well, but since his combos kept up in a faster overall game, it balances out as Yoshi got more damage out of each combo, not needing to kill until higher percentages. Yoshi's story in the Melee tier list is one of the craziest comeback stories in all of the competitive Smash Bros scene, not just Melee's. At the beginning, Yoshi was seen as a horrible character, since people were not using wave dashes and wave landings as much as they are today, since it was a new and untapped concept, his combos seemed not to be that great. This is why in the first tier list, in October of 2002, he ranked 19th out of the total 26 characters and placed in a tier long Donkey Kong, and just below Ness, in the higher tier. If you know anything about the melee competitive scene, even at these early times, you will know that being placed near these characters is not a good thing, and proves just how low Yoshi was viewed in the early competitive meta. This was due to, as stated before, untapped potential of his combos and aerial movement to bait out his opponents and escape from other combos. At this time, Yoshi was being comboed, edge guarded, edge hogged, and walled out by characters with more range than him. However, Yoshi would get his time to shine with his new abilities and powers of his double jump cancel techniques, and this would make him rise in the tier list as of September of 2003, just under a year from the first list where Yoshi would now be ranked 13th place in the top of mid-tier. This mid-placing, however, would not last forever. Since Yoshi was an easy character to understand his wave dash and wave land combos, he advanced in the meta early, but as time went on and other characters' wave dashing abilities were optimized, they all caught up and he began to drop again. This put him at 21st just a few months later. While all hope seemed to be lost for Yoshi, one man had the idea to change everything and all opinions of the character, and his name is Amsa. As Amsa the Red Yoshi began to play the game and show people how this character can truly be played at the top level, the rankings started rising for the dinosaur. Yoshi jumped up 3 spots, then 6th, and finally ranked at 10th place in B plus tier under the Ice Climbers and Pikachu and just above Samus. This comeback story filled with ups and downs was insane for Yoshi, 
but ended positively as his character specialist helped him take a hold of the meta in the end. As noted in the prior section, the Yoshi results really come from one player alone, the Japanese player Amsa. Before him, there were some solid Yoshi players, such as Victor Man, Fumi, and Bringer of Death, but none can compare to the one true Yoshi player. Amsa's results consist of wins over Mango, Plup, Mewtwo King, and Hungerbox. He's currently ranked 7th in the world, which came to be due to his 4th at Genesis 6th, his 5th at Smash Summit 7 and 12, and his 5th at SmashCon 2018. Overall, this Yoshi player has helped the characters so much and shows the potential and power of a niche character specialist. <laughs> Similar to the swap to Melee, Yoshi's change to Brawl had only a few move changes. First of these was his forward tilt, which was changed from a kick to a swinging of his tail. This helped Yoshi out with his ground game, but was really not a major change from the swap to his new game. While Yoshi's overall gameplay stayed the same, he lost a bunch of his significant killing power in the swap. His strong smash attacks now became extremely weak and had trouble killing on the ground, which really weakened his game plan from the last game. However, one of the best buffs Yoshi got in the transition was in his grab, but not in the grab itself, but in the grab release animation that plays when an opponent mashes out of the grab. Yoshi's grab release in Brawl allowed for solid chain grabs on 19 characters in the cast, and some could even be followed up with a forward air spike secure a kill just from one grab. Yoshi also got a new and altered shield, which was a lot worse, and he now had to deal with a ton more shield stun than before, along with other minor changes that all added up to something pretty abysmal. Not only did Yoshi's moves change in the transition, the engine of Smash Bros. Brawl itself did not help Yoshi's combo-oriented game plan out either. With the new addition of faster air dodging, Yoshi's old reliance on his quick speed and funky movement to rack up damage was now gone, as his opponents could easily escape from his combos with such ease. It also did not help that Yoshi lost the ability to double jump cancel his moves, which increased the amount of end lag on his aerials, as he now had to wait for the animation to complete, giving him worse follow-up options off of a typical combo starter. While there were not a lot of negatives in the swap, there was a small positive gain to his recovery. This was due to his up B now granting Yoshi height again, and it helped him out greatly as the devs saw how badly Yoshi could not recover without a typical up B. But they were not the nicest to him, as they took away his ability to recover with egg roll, which was not a great move on the ground, but was alright for recovery in melee. This just overall lessened his recovery ability. Yoshi just could not get away from the nerfs in this game. In comparison to melee, the Smash Backroom, the organization that created the tier list for the older games back in the day, decided that Yoshi didn't have the abilities to compete at a similar level as before. Since some of his best attributes in that game were removed, it seemed as though the negative effects of those were doubled, and therefore Yoshi did not play so highly in the first tier list. In September of 2008, Yoshi ranked at a terrible 32nd out of the total of 37 characters in the massive low tier. This is primarily for reasons that Yoshi lacked all the things that made him Yoshi in the past game. His slick aerial movement was gone, his combos could not be strung together, and his defensive options, which should have been amazing due to his unique shield, were just lacking and left Yoshi very viable throughout a set. The sentiment continued into the next tier list as Yoshi fell to the bottom five characters, resulting in a 33rd on the tier list. After this terrible placing for the Green Dinosaur, the Yoshi mains came in clutch and proved his worth to the rest of the Brawl community as players began to get some decent and good placings with him at higher level events. Not only did this show off what Yoshi could do, but it showed off that someone could actually place highly in a scene that did not favor their character. This is where the addition of the chain grab came into play. Since Yoshi could easily get tons of percent off one grab, it leveled the playing field a little bit more, as the Yoshi player could have amazing offense that overshined his subpar neutral and defensive game. This put Yoshi on the rise until he ended at 27th place in D tier in the final tier list in 2013, under Ness and just above Luigi. Due to the rise of Yoshi mains and their ability to find and master his new tech in this game, they helped their main rise to get a higher ranking. Few main competitors were the ones that helped Yoshi out in the tier list. And while they did not bring him into the true spotlight, they helped bring him out of complete obscurity in the game. The first of these was Poltergust, who placed 17th at Wahobo 3, and was considered the best Yoshi player in the world during the time he played the game. In addition, Raptor, a tri-state Yoshi, who ranked 10th in his region's power rankings, and Zudenka, a Swiss Yoshi player, and the best in Europe with a 4th at Super Lion 4, also came into the scene. These players were able to advance their character in the meta, in a game that did not favor his gameplay and without a lot of true recognition.
Yoshi got two move slot changes in his move for Brawl to Smash 4. While not the most essential or effective changes, they were welcome ones nonetheless. The first of these was to his dash attack, which turned from a stumpy headbutt to a long-reaching kick. This helped Yoshi again in one of the places he had always had his issue, range. The other move change was to his up smash, which had a similar issue fixed. The old headbutt upwards was now changed to a bicycle kick over Yoshi's head and gave him a lot of sideways range to cover opponents to the side of him, not just above. These two moves, alongside an improved shield and the ability to jump out of it, put Yoshi back above the depths he had previously been in in Brawl, and back on the rise. Yoshi in Smash 4 had a ton of global changes to help him, and bring him out of the bottom tier and potentially bottom 5 in the game. The first of these was the addition to his killing power in all of his moves, but most importantly it made his Smash attack strong again. This helped Yoshi since it improved one of his historical weaknesses. He could now both rack up the damage with combos, and also kill to finish off stocks earlier. Speaking of combos, due to the nerf to air dodges overall in this game, Yoshi's crazy aerial combos were back. Since he could not double jump cancel, they were not the best combos, but he could still string together a few long moves to rack up damage just like the good old days. Finally, a nerf in the swap was the loss of his chain grab and grab ability setups, but with the additions and buffs to his normal moveset and game plan, Yoshi did not need to rely on cheese as much to do well and win games. With his return to his old game plan from Melee in Smash 64 again, the Smash 4 tier list committee over-exaggerated Yoshi's return as they understood the potential when the game first came out, comparing him to his Melee counterpart. This meant that for no other reason than speculation alone, Yoshi was ranked 15th out of the total 56 characters prior to the release of Corrin and Bayonetta in the C tier, alongside Captain Falcon only. But the worst thing that could have happened to Yoshi in this game was about to enter the playing field. The addition of Corrin, Bayonetta, and the rising of Cloud in the tier list totally crushed Yoshi's ranking, as they all had the ability to outrange and outmaneuver Yoshi, either with Limit's speed buff, Corrin's pin move, or Bayonetta's insane maneuverability. This started the decline of Yoshi as a character, as he dropped to 23rd only after a few months, almost solely due to these three taking over the metagame. But this decline did not stop there, as it was the final tier list in the game, which came out in December of 2017, in which Yoshi ranked 34th in the newly regenerated D tier, under Dark Pit and Shulk. This is one of the saddest places in a tier list over any of the Smash games, as Yoshi had such high expectations, but ultimately, due to some insane broken top tier DLC, Yoshi crashed in the end of the game's life cycle as a mid tier. Since Yoshi had a lot of potential in the beginning of the game, there were tons of Yoshi mains who played pretty well and got some good results keeping Yoshi alive in the metagame. The best Yoshi was Ron, a Japanese Yoshi player who ranked 57th on the PGR 100, as he got a second at Sumoboto 12 and 17, and a first at Sumoboto 18, with wins over Shuton and Higuru. Some other great Yoshi players were Suarez, the Brawl player Poltergust, and Raptor. These players and more really saved Yoshi in the meta, and did their best to keep him afloat after that loss. Just like in the swap from previous games, Yoshi had only a few moveset changes. But this time, the few that he had really helped him in the swap from Smash 4 to Ultimate. The first of these moves was to his forward tilt, which transitioned from a strange walking sideways swipe to a stationary upwards snap of the tail. This move helped tremendously in starting combos for Yoshi. Since he used the entirety of his tail and put more effort into the swipe, it had a longer range, and therefore better power in the neutral. The other major move change was to his up B, which now allowed for the eggs that Yoshi threw to bounce on the ground and could give him more angles to cover more area. This change did not alter the move in itself in its base form, but did give Yoshi an amazing projectile that was fast and had a lot more range. This also helped Yoshi in the neutral game, since he now had a truly viable projectile that could be used to wall at opponents effectively. Furthermore, Yoshi got a new up air animation, which not only looked a lot better, but gave a few less end lag frames, and allowed for some solid, solely vertical combos with this large double jump. As for the global changes to Smash Ultimate, this was the one true factor that changed Yoshi's identity in the final Smash game. Since Yoshi is a character that loves his aerial movement, aerial combos, and just aerials in general, the reduction to landing lag overall for the whole cast was extremely helpful to Yoshi's game plan, since it allowed him to continue his aerial combos for longer, without being caught up in landing himself. Another addition to the cast was generally stronger killing options, 
which also helped Yoshi, as he was still semi-suffering from that massive nerf to his KO potential in Melee and Brawl. This, alongside with his new stellar movement tools, allowed him to come into his killing moves easily and take stocks at a normal percent for once. Finally, and probably the most important change, was Yoshi's new out of shield option. Yoshi's Nair and Ultimate has become notorious for being one of the best out of shield options in the game due to its safety, speed, and size, along with the ability to combo out of it. This game gave Yoshi the ability to change a few situations where he was in disadvantage to ones where he was in the advantage stage, just in a few frames. While the game does not have a fully fleshed out and unanimous tier list, the community's thought on Yoshi as a character is pretty standard overall. Due to his amazing aerial movement and aerial combos, along with the safety of his moves due to his air speed for backing away, Yoshi is pretty solidly placed in the high tier. This sentiment is felt with almost all the top players, despite there only being one Yoshi player in the top 50 in the last PGR, which admittedly came out a while ago at this point. Yoshi's Double Jump Super Armor, which comes out frame 1, allowed him to escape from combos just a little bit more. He also had, surprisingly not mentioned yet in this video, a command grab in his neutral beat, Egg Lay. This move, while not the greatest, is just another option and a constant threat to the opponents as it makes sitting in shield a little dangerous. Overall, Yoshi has become a much better character in this game due to his general improvements in his moveset, and since the global changes really helped him in the transition. Yoshi has a lot of great players in Smash Ultimate that have gotten tons of good results and some great wins over the years. The best ranked player, ranked 50 out of 50 on the last PGR is Ron. Ron, with wins over T, The Link, and Shutan, with tons of top 8 placements in the Japanese majors, has been one of the players who has advanced the Yoshi meta. Alongside him is the Japanese Yoshi player Yoshi Dora, the American Suarez, and the Mexican Mene. These players have helped Yoshi with his redemption arc and have raised him up from his lows in the past games. In conclusion, Yoshi has had a fairly average time in the first few games of Smash but went on a solid redemption arc from Brawl onwards to regain his spot of viability in the final game in the series successfully. In Smash 64, Yoshi used his great airspeed and combos to outmaneuver the opponent while being a solid character. In Melee, Yoshi truly optimized the use of his double jump canceling and implemented wave dashing into his combos to become one of the characters built by a character specialist, in this case, Amsa. In Brawl, Yoshi had his downfall and became a completely non-viable character only relying on chain grabs to win sets. In Smash 4, Yoshi's changes from Brawl initially had him seated as a higher tier character, but over time his flaws were discovered by a few swordsmen and a witch. In Ultimate, Yoshi finally took the spotlight and became what he wanted to always be, a solid character with a great advantage, great movement, and a solid disadvantage to boot. Overall, Yoshi in Smash is one of the most versatile yet simple characters to play, who can take these quirks to the next level. Thank you for watching this video, and please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it, as well as hitting that bell to turn on notifications. Check out my most recent community post for a chance to decide the subject of my next video. Have a good day, and as always, remember, let's go Islanders.